Well, today on Nation, the podcast for window cleaners, we're talking all about the mental side of business. So even if you're in window cleaning, if you're in pressure washing, if you're in roof cleaning, if you do any kind of small business, this is going to be a good episode talking about mental health. I know it's a weird subject, but I hope you enjoy WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, my name is Jersey, and I will be babbling at you for this episode. There's actually five years of content, so go back, watch every episode, uh, listen to every episode. It's anywhere podcasts are, and also on YouTube. So if you want to write a comment, do it on YouTube. If you want to play it in the background, you sure can. Either way, dive in. There's some really good content out there and, um, you know, some of it comes from me. So maybe <laughs> that's up to you to decide, but I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. Full disclosure. Um, I am a salesman. That's what I do. I'm a product specialist. So if you need any help or even better, if you think you get anything from this and you want to give me like a high five of awesomeness, you should be like, yeah, thanks. No, there's no Patreon. There's none of that, but you can let me put your order in. And if you do that, it costs you nothing extra, not a penny extra. I put the order in for you, and I get credit for it. That's why I live my lavish lifestyle. And uh, hair gel, apparently. Everybody keeps mentioning hair gel. I don't know. But if you want to tell me what kind of brand name item I can buy with your commission, please do so. 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Let me know uh, if it's in your cart or what you can get ordered. I would love love, genuinely love to put your orders in for you. Uh, also, if you've seen stickers and you've seen the magazine and you've heard of American Window Cleaner Magazine, or even if you haven't, there is a magazine made specifically for the window cleaning business owner. It's been around since 1986. The American Window Cleaner Magazine. Go to awcmag.com. Get yourself a subscription. Not only do you get stickers, but you get an amazing magazine with some really awesome content, super cool pictures, posters, all that stuff. Go to awcmag.com and get a subscription. Okay. Shameless plug's done. We're over that part. Uh, but I have to say, I'm recording this in January. And um, this time of year, especially in our industry, most of the states are slower. This is a really hard time for a lot of business owners, small business owners in general. This may be your time. You may make it through winter perfectly fine, and maybe it's the slowdown in the summer, or maybe a burnout might happen. Something is going to happen at some point in your business where mentally you just, you've burned the fuse. It's gone. It happens to every single person. If it's never happened to you, it's going to come. It's going to come, and it's going to come heavy. The downside is, is... It does happen to everybody, but the upside is, is you can kind of um, control it to some degree. I have, uh, I'm a big podcast, uh, uh, audio book and all that, and um, uh, a lady that works with me named Jen actually gave me a calendar, uh, and on that calendar every day there's like a business type quote, right? And uh, the one that was the other day that I hung up, on my bulletin board, is your brain is your B word. And I don't swear in the podcast, but you know what I'm talking about. Your brain is your B word. You can make your brain do anything. You can tell it to do anything, tell it to think something, tell it to run a certain way, but sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we really forget that we control everything from our bodies. Every kind of mental side of it, we get into a shoot, right? You're, you're, you're in the slide. It's an enclosed slide, right? Eventually, you're just in the flow. You know where you're going. It's just taking you there. And eventually, sometimes you just go, this is what's happening. I can't believe this is what's happening, right? And that's where the mental side comes from, is we get so embedded in business that we don't remember that we're only 
able to calmly do certain things. In small business, your HR, your marketing department, you're also in ad advertising and sales, you're also in the techs, right? You're maybe the mechanic, you're doing the oil changes, you're doing everything for your business. And the big thing to remember is it's because of us that you fail or succeed. We've talked about that a bunch. 100% true, 100% lies on your shoulders, but that takes a toll on us. It really takes a toll on us when we need to continue to keep pushing through. And sometimes you're just like, man, you keep putting books in a backpack and eventually a backpack tips you over, right? So mental side of things are really tough because we don't talk about it either. A lot of times we're like, oh man, yeah, I got burnt out. Like it's a past tense thing. We don't want to talk about it during the time, during the hurt, during the, right? We don't want to do that. So we just kind of deal with it. Oh man, I just can't get, and then all of a sudden it's a week of your brain being turned off and you're burned out and you're just like, and for some people it doesn't come back. For some people, the burnout is too real and you just don't come back from it. So let's talk about it before we get to that point. Maybe you're in it now. Maybe this is going to be speaking to you. Um, I really do, by the way, enjoy every time we put out a video, people text me and they're like, um, this one just spoke to me. This is like absolutely perfect to where I am right now. And I hope you do too. By the way, shout out to three random people that put orders in through me um, that shoot me messages all the time. Chuck uh, Huntington, what's going on? Kenneth Collins, what's up? And Ron Bennett, which by the way, Ron Bennett's in Vegas and I'm going, leaving for the IWC show tomorrow when I'm recording this to Vegas. So anyway, thank you to those guys. But if you ever want to send me a message, definitely do it. But the first big thing to kind of corralling your brain is to look at the short or to not look at the short term as much as you look at the long term, right? By the time you hit the short term, you're already there, right? So think about when you're driving. And by the way, if this is your first time watching, I'm a, unfortunately my brain works in analogies, so I do a lot of these, just bear with me. But when you're driving, you're looking off in the distance and your brain's registering what's there and it knows about what's where you are. Right? That's why you're not staring at the road right over your hood and making sure you're in the lines. You kind of know that's where you are. Right? You watch the out, the farther, the longer distance, so that when it gets to you, short term, you know. What happens is, in burnout, in general, this time of year, in general, they look at the now. If you're having some mental issues, or you're just struggling a little bit, think about what you're actually focused on. You're not focused on 2023. Because 2023 is going to be a big year. It's going to be an awesome year for you. The growth, the everything, man, spring is going to be huge, huge. You're going to kill it. This is going to be the biggest year you've ever had. So why, why is your brain not in it? Why, why are you distant? Why are you just foggy on everything? It's because you're looking at the short term. Go, man... I got no work on the calendar next week. Right? Maybe you do have work on the calendar, but it's not a lot. You're like, man, this time of year, we got four more weeks of this. You're looking at the short term. The short term exists because of the long term view you had before. If you focus on the short term more than the long term, you see the now and the pain, right? It's really good if you're looking at the if in the middle of spring, you're like, dude, I had a ten thousand dollar week, man. I had a five thousand dollar week, man. I had a one thousand dollar week, man. Things could be amazing and you're focused on that. Guess what happens to your brain? Hey, it's great right now. I don't need to advertise. It's going great. You're not looking at the long term. Right? The longer you go, the more you can see the bigger picture. The farther you zoom out, the more you can see. You know, satellites can see the entire United States in one picture. That's, that's, that's a view. You can see every bit. 
I can't see the minute details. You can't see who's swimming on the East Coast versus who's swimming on the West Coast. But you can see the whole country. You can get a good picture of it, right? That's what we need to do. Is in, It's more important to focus on the longer term or the bigger picture than the short term. This time of year is really easy to get burnt out when you're like, oh man, I did all this stuff, I worked so hard and now I got no work. It starts to be defeating, right? There's the theory of threes. The theory of threes is that bad news or bad things happen in threes. I find that to be pretty darn true in my experience. When one bad thing happens, it's normally not one thing. One bad thing happens, then a second thing happens, and you're like, oh, man. Ugh, this is just like, and then the third thing happens. You're like, I just can't catch a break. Everything is going wrong. It's only three things that may have gone wrong. All of those things, there's an end. There's there's like another part to it, the longer range. Three bad things happen right now. The longer range will still be good. Right? You know that. Sometimes we have to do uh, crappy things right now, but it comes back to you later. Focus on the long term, not as much the short term. Because you know it. You know you're going to kill it this year. But that's the long term view, the long term goals, right? Another thing that people do that can screw them up is working too much and being connected too much. The term disconnect is thrown around a lot. But if you live this life and you're doing all of those positions, you may be up late Saturday night working. You may be up early Sunday morning working or late Sunday working or trying to get prepped for Monday. You work all week. It doesn't turn off at five, right? Well, all you're doing is putting all of your time, all of your motivation, all of your energy into this thing. And you're just burning. You're burning, you're burning, you're burning. You never put things back in, right? You have to put new wood in the fire or it burns out. Eventually, all of the wood in the fire will burn out, right? But it's very hard because we also know that because of us is success and because of us is failure. So if we don't focus on or we do or we um, put the effort or the energy or the whatever, if we don't put it in, nobody else will. I did one of the one of the most um, commented on episodes I ever did was no one gives two dumps about you. And I'm going to just give you a quick synopsis. In your business, no one cares if it fails or succeeds. Now, people go, well, yeah, my wife does. No, okay. She does, but she also knows that if this doesn't, something happened, you'd find something. You're not just going to let the world, right? She knows that you'll be able to find something or do something. Your employees would hate that they lost a job, but they would find something else. They'd find another person to sign their checks. The only person is you. If you fail or succeed, the only person that cares is you. That's a big burden. That's heavy. You have to disconnect from that every now and then. If you take a weekend of just actual disconnect, or say you take a week of actual disconnect, you go on a cruise, you don't answer your phone. If you do that, that will be tenfold. If you're watching this and you're not in the U.S., you already know that you guys take longer vacations or holidays, right? In the U.S., the longest vacation that most people take is a week. Very, very seldom do you see anybody take any more than that at a time. In this country, we kind of get like two weeks. Two weeks vacation is like kind of standard, but some places don't have to give you any vacation. In other places, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to be uh, on, vac- I'm a, I'm on a holiday for six weeks. Talk about disconnect. Now, I find that really hard for my brain to be able to do, but that's disconnect, right? So if you take a week, don't feel guilty for taking a week because if you can refuel yourself, right, put more logs in that fire, you'll burn hotter when you get back. Yeah, it sucks, you know, catching up and everything. 
but it's really, really important to disconnect. A lot of you guys know uh, that I have a place up in the mountains. That's my disconnect. That's my disconnect. I try to build structure in what I do because I talk and do content and videos and lives and, and all that stuff. I try to build in structure. And when I leave for a weekend to go up to the land, which um, I do quite often, right? I'll leave Friday night and I come back Sunday. Sunday night, sometimes, I'll start back at work and answering questions, doing some things. But that weekend is a disconnect. It's literally a disconnect. And I need to do that because I'm getting it in little batches. And then I'll get a big batch if I take a week. I usually do two weeks vacation where I take it just off. Like, sorry, like, you know. But I still do texts every day. I don't actually fully disconnect unless I can get on a cruise or something where I don't have any type of communication. But if you do that, every time you come back, you burn hotter. You burn more, right? Don't burn yourself out, especially this time of year where we're working 10 times harder to make less money than we did in the spring, right? The momentum's not there this time of year. Don't burn yourself out. But a big thing in burnout is the unexpected. A big piece of it is, is that when you get kicked, you fall to the ground and you just keep getting kicked. You keep getting kicked. You just cannot get up. Every time you get kicked, it's harder for you to get up. That's planning. Planning sounds so stupid because I know people kind of, they, 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 they understand it, but they're like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's like systems. It's, yeah, okay. But the big thing with planning is, is that if you know that in winter, you're going to have three months slow, we'll say, right? You know that your bills for your company, just to run your company, or X, Y, Z a week, right? You know that you also need to pay yourself X, Y, Z a week, right? In winter, it sucks because you don't get any money sometimes, right? The weekend of like Christmas to New Year's or the week of Christmas to New Year's, like that's pretty much not doing a lot of work usually. So what about this? What about in 2023, you plan that. You take all of those costs, all the payments and all the... Um, payroll that you're going to pay yourself, maybe your guys, your everything. Okay. It's 10 game, 10 K for even numbers, right? Maybe it's a hundred K. Maybe it's five K, whatever that number is for you. Save it. Okay. Well, it starts in November. We'll say it starts in December, whatever your date is. So by December 1st, I want to save this much money. That means every week I need to set aside this much money. If you go into winter, but all your bills are covered, your payroll is covered, your, you, your pay is covered, your everything is covered, and you're not getting any new work, you're not dwelling on it like, oh my gosh, this is hitting me, it's hitting me, it's hitting me, it's hitting me, it's hitting me. You've planned for it. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I do want some extra work. Obviously, you want to get back into it as fast as possible. But if it's a hard winter, you've planned for that. The problems and the things and the pieces of this puzzle that make you so burnt out, plan on it. Plan on it and fix it. Right? Maybe taxes. Oh, man, this time of year I'm so slow and then taxes. How do you plan that? How do you work with your accountant to fix that so that you can plan for everything? If you plan it, it's not a problem. Uncertainty? Or issues is a question, really. Ah, oh, man, we're so slow right now. Well, question is, how can we get more customers? That was the question. If you could answer that, you wouldn't have a problem of we're slow, right? Man, I'm just worried. I'm worried about uh, winter. Worrying is a question. Anything you're worried about, it's just a question. You have to figure out what the question is. Man, I'm worried that, you know, my wife is, you know, not happy. Okay. I know you're worried about that, but are you just going to worry about it? Talk about it? Or are you going to say, okay, so the question is, how do I make 
sure my wife is happy. The same thing in business, right? You could take a worry. Oh, man. I'm worried that this summer is just going to be dead. I'm worried about the economy hitting. I'm worried about gas prices coming. Ugh, I'm worried about... Okay, so if you're worried about a thing, we'll say the economy, how do you plan for that? Well, if you think you're going to have less customers this year than next year, how do you plan that? How do you get more customers? Well, now if you already have something in play, say you have your marketing calendar in place, say you have your um, money set aside for marketing and all that, well, now what? Now you can't be worried about a thing you already planned for. Right? When you say you're a, a professional uh, musician, right? You're Taylor Swift. <laughs> yes, I have daughters. But say you're, you're that. Do you think that she gets nervous or worries about a concert? She may say that to be grounded, but she doesn't. She sang those exact same songs in the exact same order with the exact same background a hundred thousand times. She sung the song, she's recorded them and researched them and memorized them, and she's got teleprompters and she knows her, her um, choreography and she's got all that. She's not worried about a performance. Tonight she'll be in, say, Dallas. Well, tomorrow she'll be in Chicago. Like, she's going to wake up today and be as comfortable with today as she is tomorrow. She's not worried about all that. Why? Because she's basically planned it. She's planned it out. She knows what's happening. She's practiced so much. She's planned it. You can't worry about something that you know the answer to. You just can't. Right? There's two seasons in business, by the way, too. Coasting and growth. Coasting and growth, you need to find out what you're in, what season you're in right now. Because if you're in a coast growth, uh, a coast mode, then you may think your brain is just out of it, but that might just be the, the mode you're in. We get to a certain level and we're like, okay, well, I'm going to ride this a little bit. The important part is that you come out of that. I've had people that I've experienced them coming out of that. I personally have coasted huge way more time than I thought when I had my company I remember it was probably about five years in I just was coasting like ugh. yep I don't know work I got it just like did not I did nothing for growth I coasted we made great money the guys made great money they were busy I was happy I was coasting at some point I decided that I wanted to grow bigger Growth mode takes more energy than coasting. You need to figure out where you're in. If you're in coast mode, great. Now's the time where you have to disconnect. Disconnect a little bit, do a little bit of research, start getting your brain back into it, and then you can explode into the growth season. But growth season's burning you a lot hotter than coasting. So be prepared for that. If you're prepared for growth mode, that's financial, that's ours, that's your brain, that's everything. Getting into that's kind of interesting. What I like to do is I'll go from coach mode into growth and I'll start thinking about the things that will get me more excited. Books, podcasts, start doing a bunch more research, watching things, looking at things, doing things. All of a sudden your brain starts rolling and that growth mode can happen. It's pretty interesting, really. But growth mode will burn more than coast mode. If you're in coast mode now, you may think that you're in, uh, you're burnt out, but it may just be your coasting. Again, with the planning about worrying is set goals. One way that you could really get yourself back into it mentally, set a goal. Like, you know where this year is going to be. Break it up. Let's go really deep into the numbers. The numbers will get you excited. It sounds so dumb and nerdy, I know. But the numbers will get you excited because you'll be able to see what happens and you'll be able to see like, we got to push for tomorrow because this is happening. If you can do that, 
push for a goal that gets you excited because you have a thing to go for. If you're just open-ended in business in general, you're back on the inner tube in the water slide. You're just, you're there. If you're not setting goals and you're not planning things, you're in coast mode because your business, you're just on the ride. If you're planning goals, you're the one steering, right? If your brain is disconnected, especially this time of year, there's so many things you can do to steer the ship or to look forward to steering the ship later. If you have goals out there, you have things to work towards. Now, a goal could be by the end of 2023, fill in the blank. That means that now I have 365 individual goals I just created because now every day I need to know to do this, this, then this to get by that. I did an, an interesting episode. Uh, uh, I thought it was interesting. But I did this um, a couple years back, but it was uh, the million dollars. Everybody always wants to, it's a sexy number. What do you want to do? I want to hit a million by year five. Okay. I've had people do that where they're like, I want to do a million this year. Cool. What are you doing now? They tell me. Okay. Do you know what a million dollars looks like? Do you know that a million dollars is end up being five trucks on the road? Five trucks, two guys, tax, one. You could start figuring everything out and see what it looks like. And then really see how to hit that goal. I had a guy one time, this is years ago, if you're watching, um, I haven't talked to you in years, so I don't know that you're watching anymore. I don't know that you're even in business anymore. Uh, but I had talked to this fella a couple times, um, texted him, you know, he was newer in business, and um, he had, he was going to hit a million dollars in his second year. That's what his goal was. That's what his goal was. His first three months of business, he made like $7,000. Which, first off, could be good if you're doing this slowly and casually. But it's really, really bad if you're going to hit a million dollars in year two. I said, okay, so I know this million dollar goal is there and it's the fire that's, that's putting you, but... I don't think that it's really a fire because you're only doing $7,000. Like that's not, you have not done a lot of selling. You've not done marketing. You've not done anything focused on to push this. Ah, that's not true. That's not true at all. Okay. I said, well, let's, let's like, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. We broke it down into how many new customers he needed by this certain time. And his whole thing was, he was worried that he was not going to get this million dollars by year two we broke it down and figured out that he needed to get on i forget the numbers but it was like i mean you know fifty thousand dollars worth of new work every like two weeks or something this is what you need to do well his two year he was going to be worrying about his two year just draining on his mental side for two years he realized in one call that's this is not not happening there's just we're just not I cannot put that much resources into this. It's just not going to happen. Let's not worry about the million then, right? If you set goals, if you plan, if you really break it in, then your mental side won't go. If you just let your brain go and not plan anything, you will deteriorate your mental side and then you get burnout. And I'm telling you, I've met lots of people who have burned out to the point of not returning. Oh, what, what happened to so-and-so? I don't know, just got tired of it, sold this company. Like, those are burnouts. The thing with burnout is if you catch it, or you know how to change it, or you know how to turn it, or you just can push your brain, you can get out of burnout. Remember, your brain is your B word. Yeah. If you need to know what that B word is, let me know. I'll, I'll text you privately, but... <laughs> But yeah, mental sides, it's, it's hard. It's hard for the mental side of it because sometimes it feels so lost. You feel so far from anything, so drained, and that's business. We burn so hot as entrepreneurs. More than anybody else, if you work for somebody, you don't understand because they control a lot of the stuff. All you got to do is your job. As a small business owner, we have way more, Right? So don't burn out. If you're feeling it, you want to talk, let me know. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. 
Yeah, I put orders in. That's how I make my cheddar. So I would love to do that. Love to. Give me a shot. I would love to earn your trust. I would love to put the orders in. I would love to just have you as a customer, right? I want all of the customers. So send me a message. Text me, call me, whatever. Let me put your order in. Uh, I would love nothing more than that. But uh, also, if you're having any type of mental, uh, if you need mental clarity, if you need help with that side of it, let me know. I would love to help with that too. Um, and get the magazine. Remember we talked about getting your brain into something, surrounding yourself, submersing yourself, watching videos, YouTube, podcasts. What about a magazine? Get the magazine. awcmag.com. Get the magazine. It means the world to me on that also. But either way, I hope you're having a great winter. I hope you're surviving. And uh, more importantly, I hope that you be epic. <laughs>